Welcome to another video in the period in the closing playlist. We always have some accounting entries that we need to post more than one time and the accounting entry has the same values and the same inputs. But for example, we need to post it at the end of every month during the year, or maybe we need to post it at a certain day of the month. So maybe the 10th of the month or the 15th, or maybe it is an accounting entry that we need to post every week, but it is the same accounting entry, but we need to post every week or every month or every two months and so on. These entries are called recurring entries. And in SAP, there are many tools that can help us track and post these recurring entries without having to redo the manual work every time. So one of the most common examples is the prepaid rent expense. So we have our house and we pay rent annually at the beginning of the year. So in January, or maybe even one month before the year starts in December of the year before, we issue an invoice to the rent supplier for the full value of rent for the year. And let's say, for example, to make it easy, the rent, the annual rent is 120,000. And then this 120,000 belongs to the whole year. So in January, there should be 10,000, in February, 10,000, in March, 10,000. So we split it over the months without looking into how many days we have in each month. So all the months are equal and we need to split the 120 over 12 months. So the accounting tre treatment for a prepaid expense like this one is when we issue the invoice at the beginning of the year, we are going to post a debit to a prepaid expense account. We don't post to the expense account directly because if we post to the expense account directly in January, then the full 120,000 will be loaded to the expenses of January. And this is wrong. This 120,000 should be split between all the months. So when we post the invoice in January, we are going to post a debit to a prepaid expense account. This is a balance sheet account. It is like we still have our money and we credit the supplier account. Then at the end of January, we take 10,000 from the prepaid expense and we post it to the expense account. So the accounting entry will be debit to the expense account and the credit to the prepaid expense account for 10,000. This means we still have 110,000 remaining as a prepaid expense and we only have 10,000 as rent expense in January, which is correct according to the magic principle that for each month we should have the revenues and expenses related only to this month. So every month, February, we still need to do the same accounting entry. So the same accounting entry of debit expense, credit prepaid expense has to be posted 12 times at the end of every month during the year. So if I want to do this without having any specific tool, it means that I'm keeping track of this maybe in an Excel sheet. And at the end of every month, I need to go and post this accounting entry, either upload it or post it manually, but I need to track all of this. And if I forget, then I have wrong reporting of the period. In SCAP, there are many tools that can help us manage these recurring entries. So, so the first tool, which is more advanced, is the Accrual Engine. And I'm going to explain it also in this playlist. And the second tool, which is more simple and doesn't require any specific configuration, is called Recurring Entries. So there is a tool called Recurring Entries, which allows us to create a reference entry. So the, no, it's not an accounting posting, just a reference telling SAP that I would like to post an accounting entry that has a debit to expense, credit to prepaid, and uh, the cost centers included uh, all the details, description, text, and everything. Exactly like a normal accounting entry, but it doesn't do any postings. It's just a reference. And then we have another program that we run at the end of every period where SAP is going to check all the reference recurring documents, which reference recurring documents should run at this period. And it does the posting automatically and gives a nice report of what was posted, what is remaining, and so on. So in the video today, I'm going to show you a full demo for the Recurring Entries tool. This demo will be on SAP Fury using SAP S4HANA 2023. I will show you how to create the reference accounting document and then how to post it at the end of every period. And in the future videos in this playlist, I'm going to also demonstrate and explain the Accrual Engine. For now, let's proceed with the Recurring Entries tool. Here I have my SAP Fury Launchpad and by now you should already know very well how to manage the SAP Fury. So how to manage your settings, the layout and so on. If you don't, then you can check the full playlist I created on SAP Fury Overview. I'm going to leave you a link here. So this is my launch pad and the tiles I'm going to use in the demo today, we can find in the SAP Fury Apps Reference Library, which is a public website, including all the Fury tiles. 
because sometimes if you check your own user your own launchpad maybe you are missing some authorizations so you'll not be able to find all the tiles so the first thing we do when we want to do something in sap fury is to check the reference library and to see what are the available tiles and then to confirm that we have access to them if we are missing any tile then we need to add the needed rules so the tiles we need in order to use the recurring entries tool the first one is called manage recurring entries so the manage recurring entry tile let's see them one by one so the manage recurring entry tile first of all you need to choose your version here of course uh, this is a standard tile provided by sap if you cannot find it in your user then you go to this page here you go to the implementation information you open the configuration and then you scroll down and you are going to find the business rule so when you find the business rule this one is what you need to add into your user id if you have access to add it yourself then you do if you don't then you request an administrator to add it this is mandatory in order to be able to find the tile in your fury launchpad the second one we can use is manage recurring supplier invoices so this is the same thing but it allows us to use suppliers the other one is only for general ledger accounts and then we have the third one which is enter recurring entries this is exactly the sap GUI application but we can access it from sap fury if needed and this is important because this the standard fury tile for managed recurring journal entries has some limitations it only allows general ledger accounts we are going to see this with uh, together now so if we use the standard managed recurring journal entries tile which is the standard fury tile for the solution it only allows us to use general ledger accounts it doesn't allow assets it doesn't allow customers or vendors but if we want to make a recurring entry that has a supplier or a customer or an asset in it then in this case we have to use the standard GUI application and we can launch it from sap fury if needed if you want to use the standard GUI transaction in sap fury then you have to use this page you need to create your own business catalog so this requires this requires some configuration and so on so you need to define your own business catalog and then you need to assign to define a business rule and to assign it to a rule and assign it to your user now let's get back to our demo so the tile we are using is manage recurring journal entries and i will follow the example i explained that we have an annual rent expense that we posted in january but then we need a reference accounting document or a recurring entry that will be posted every period and during the year so when i go here we can click on go and this will show all the available reference documents if you have any i can also insert my company code here so ag00 then click on go or press enter and i don't have any reference documents currently or i don't have any recurring journal entries available now i can click here create new recurring journal entries to create our first reference document so this is not going to post any accounting entry but as you see the screen is very similar to the accounting document screen because here we insert all the details needed so the company code currency accounts and so on so first i have the general ledger uh, the general entry type so the document type is say company code if i want to insert a ledger group we can go on transaction currency is euro i can change it and then here we have a very important field conversion rule is use current exchange rate so for example if i am posting a foreign currency document every month this is a recurring entry so i want sap to use the exchange rate available when the entry is posted or i can have another uh, another option to say that i want to use a fixed exchange rate for all the postings it depends on your business case reference i can set here a reference like test this is text header text if needed like any accounting entry and then here we have the line items so first we have two line items if you would like to add more you can click here this will add other line items in each line item if you click on this arrow it will show you all the details of the line items so the different fields available like cost center and so on so for the first line item i have here company code ag00 the gl account debit and credit so this fee will be for example our rent expense and this will be our debit so for example i'm going to use another expense account 31000 okay so this account and then in the debit side i'm going to say 10000 so we have 120000 over 12 months i'm going to post 10000 every month so this accounting entry will have the value that will be posted and then on the credit side on the second line item here we insert 10000 in the credit and the gl account let's say it is a bank account or in our example it will be the prepaid expense account but it's just any account to show you how this works and then in the first line of course we need a cost center so if we go here 
we open the details, we can see the item text. So exactly similar to any accounting entry, you can insert anything you want. The assignment, the, um, uh, this is the group currency uh, value, and then here we have, for example, the cost center, I'm going to insert 1000. We also have the order, trading partner, WBS element, and so on. So you fill any data you want, and the additional currency amount or the group currency amount will be determined every month based on the exchange rate available in the month because we selected this in the header. So this is the first line item. I can now close it. And then in the second line item, we have 150,000. I can also click here to insert any details needed. I don't want to insert anything, so this is fine for me. If I want to add another line item, I can click here and add other line items. So now I have the two lines, both of them marked as green. We don't have any issues. Here we have the total balance zero, which means the accounting entry is balanced, so it is okay. And then here we have the recurrence rule. So this is something you cannot find in the normal accounting entries, but this is a reference document. So here we tell SAP, when do we want to run this recurring entry? So we have the start date. So I would like to run this entry starting 01-09-2025. I can say, for example, I want to start it from 1st of August. So we can see it together. So I want to run this accounting entry starting 1st of August. And then we have the recurrence pattern. So I can choose monthly, weekly, or by posting period. So for me, this is a monthly posting. I want it to run every month. I can say that I want it to run every two months or every three months. So for example, it will run in January, then in March, then in May, or I want it to run in January, February, March, April, and so on. So now I want it to run every month. So here I will insert one. And then on, I can insert also in which day of the month. So I can say I want it to run on the first day of the month, on the last day, or in any specific day. So if I say a specific day, I can say, for example, it should run on the 15th of the month. It depends on your business case. You can choose anything you want. And then I want it to end after how many occurrences. So I want this entry to be posted for 12 months. Then in this case, I will insert 12 years. So this means what? SAP is going to start posting this accounting entry. The first post posting will be on the 15th of August. And then it will run every month for 12 months. So 15th of September, 15th of October, 15th of November, and so on. And it will end after 12 occurrences. I can also choose here and, uh, and say by and then insert a specific date. So I want it to end by, for example, end of July, something like this. So in this case, SAP is going to count the number of months that will be posted. And if you scroll down, and this changes based on your, ins your data that you insert here, you can see here how many times it will be run and it will be posted and in which date and what is the amount that will be posted exactly. This is very useful and you will always have access to see this report through the lifetime of the recurring entry. So at any month, you can go here, you will find which months are posted and which months are still remaining and what is the available balance. So this is it. Now we have total amount of 120,000. It will be split over 12 months. We have 12 postings. On, it will be posted on the 15th. It will start from August until July next year. So now we click on save and the recurring journal entry is ending with two is saved in company code AG00. We click on OK. And as I explained, this doesn't post any accounting entry so far. It is only a reference document, so no accounting impact. Now, whenever we go to the same tile again, so let's go back to the Fury Launchpad. You see here outside, we can see how many recurring entries or how many reference entries we have. And then if you go inside, you can filter by company code, recurring journal entry number, next posting date. So for example, if I want to run for August, I can also filter by header text, reference. We can click on adapt filters and this will show other filtration criteria available. So you can find the reference documents you want. And then once you click on go, you'll find the reference documents here. You can also modify this layout to include more columns. So here we have the company code, recording journal entry number, text reference, posted over total. So how many accounting entries have been posted over how many in total. So we have zero posted over 12. And if you click here, you can add other columns for into your layout to be able to really select the entries you want. Now, once you find the recurring entry you want, you select it. So if we have multiple entries, we can select all of them by clicking here or select them one by one. And then you click on post. And here we have post up to date 1508-2025. I can ask SAP, for example, to post these recurring entries until the end of October. It's up to me. So I can choose here, for example, let's try this together. I want to post until the end of October. 
which means that SAP is going to post August, September, and October. So I'm not going to select any specific posting date. SAP is going to find it automatically from the reference document and click on post. And then now we can see here that we have one recurring journal entry has been processed. Three postings were done, August, September, October. Okay. And here in the overview, we can see posted three over 12. And if I go into the accounting entry onto the reference document, we can see here all the details. And if you scroll down, we have for August, this is the accounting document posted. For September, for October, they are marked as posted. And we still have all these are still remaining. So you see very nice tracking of how many postings were done, what is remaining and so on. It's much better than using an Excel sheet or than doing this manually every month. If you click on the journal entry number, you can display the accounting entry and it will be exactly the same as our reference document. So we'll have the debits, credits and the posting date. So let's see this together. So you see here we have the journal entry date 15 of August 2025, the posting date 15 of August, because this is what we mentioned in the reference document that we post in the 15th of the month. The reference, we have the header text, the accounting entry, the who created this accounting entry, when was it entered, we have the debit to the other expense, and we have a credit to the local bank, 10,000, 10,000. And if you go into the details, you are going to find the cost center and so on. So this is it. Now you understand how to create your own reference documents for recurring entries, how to run them every month and how to see the report to understand how many postings were done and what's remaining and so on. I hope you found this demo useful and easy to understand. As I mentioned in the introduction of the video, this is only one of the tools used for the recurring entries and it is the most basic one that doesn't require any configuration. But the more advanced tool that I like to use is Acrol Engine. I'm saying this now because I know some people will leave comments saying, why don't you use Acrol Engine? I'm going to demonstrate how to use Acrol Engine, but sometimes we can also use the recurring entries tool because it is very simple to use. It doesn't require any training or any special treatment or any configuration even. So here you go. This is the recurring entry tool. The Acrol Engine will be explained in the future videos in the playlist. Don't forget to leave me your comments and questions if you want me to explain anything else. If you are using this tool today, then also leave me a comment, tell me uh, whether you like it and whether it is useful for you or do you find that the Acrol Engine is better. Also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Let me also know what else you want me to add in the period ending closing playlist. I'm still building the playlist so I can add anything else you want. Once I finish the playlist, it will be very hard to come back. So if you have any recommendations of what to add in the period ending closing playlist, then go ahead. Also, if you would like to get access to the same system I'm using in my demo today, so to use the same data to follow exactly the demo step by step or to configure your own configuration if needed so you get full access to the system, then you can subscribe to my AG SCEPS for HANA server. Go to my website www.galalconsulting.com slash access and you will be able to subscribe online, pay with a credit card directory on the website and within one day you receive a user ID that allows you to configure anything you want in the system and also to use my configuration and to follow exactly the demos as you see on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share the video with your connections, also check the channel membership program to get access to member exclusive videos, documents like configuration documents and others and also to a private Slack community where you can chat with me and the other members of the community. If you would like to book an appointment with me to discuss your project or to ask any questions about interviews or the career in general, you can also book an appointment from my website, galalconsulting.com. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.